Hello everyone. Today we will discuss about forensic linguistics and how forensic linguistics can solve the Chris Coleman case. First of all, we have to know the background. There is no realm of human life that is not touched by communication. Going deeper, there is no realm of human life that is not touched by language, which is a means of communication in a broad sense. It is this logic that allows linguistics to have a role or contribution in the realm of law and justice. Forensic linguistics acts as a knife study that linguistically examines and describes the linguistic interaction that occur between legal people and ordinary people. What is meant by legal people here includes legislators, makers of legal books, makers of regulations, up to police officers. Meanwhile, ordinary people are anyone who becomes the opposite partner of legal people. In many countries itself, there are many and various legal problems. Of course, those cases cannot only be handled by the police. The assistance of expert language witnesses is needed to reveal the truth of the statements made by the defendant. The linguists chosen to be witnesses are of course experts who are already competent in linguistics. So, on this occasion, I will tell you the first, what is the concept of forensic linguistics, and the second, how forensic linguistics solve the Chris Coleman case. Concept of forensic linguistics. Forensic linguistics is a branch of linguistics that analyzes and investigates aspects of language as a means of proof in courts and law or simply can be defined as the application of linguistics in the field law. As a discipline, forensic linguistics reviews spoken and written materials and using the scientific techniques of linguistics analyzes them. There are three main areas that are the focus of forensic linguistics studies. First, language as a product of law or the language of the law, namely investigating the language used in the legal system, especially the style and register used. This field examines in depth how a language can be taught and learned and what steps can be taken to make it more understandable. The second, language in court proceedings, or the language of the legal process, namely discussing the oral discourse that occurs in the legal process, which is studied from various perspectives. This field includes the use of the language of participants in the courtroom, namely judges, lawyers, and witnesses. The third, language as evidence, which is related to authorship and communication which requires linguistic theories in solving it, starting from phonetics and phonology, morphology, syntax, pragmatics, and discourse. In certain cases, forensic linguistic studies can be multidisciplinary by involving other disciplines in an effort to reveal the facts behind a case. For example, in the investigative interview process involving psychology to detect the behavior of the people being interviewed, or the science of translation when dealing with speakers in another language, or have language differences with the forensic linguist who conducting the investigation. Now, we will discuss about the Chris Coleman case. First of all, we have to know about the chronology of the case. Chris Coleman is a husband and father of two children. In 2009, he began alerting friends and co-workers about the threats he was receiving via email. The threats were mainly aimed at him, but when they became more aggressive and started towards his family, he took some precautions. His neighbor across the street was a high-profile police officer, and Coleman had 
asked him to set up cameras to monitor his house for any suspicious behavior. While working out at the gym, Coleman called his wife, Sherry, but no one answered. Worried about her health, she called her neighbor, a police officer, and asked him to check on her and her children. Neighbors walked over a terrible sight. Coleman's wife and two children lay strangled to death, and the walls were sprayed with red graffiti with threats such as, You have faith. The police began to suspect Coleman himself, but unfortunately, the evidence against him was only circumstantial. Now, we move to analysis of how forensic linguistics can solve the Chris Coleman case. Robert Leonard, an expert in forensic linguistics, compared the graffiti with 221 emails known to have been written by Coleman. Leonard discovered and noted new findings that the U, abbreviation for U, is frequently found in cell phone text messages but rarely in email. But the killer and Coleman used the U in the email. Additionally, it was discovered that Coleman consistently placed contraction apostrophes in the wrong places. Not with space apostrophe and Colden without space as did the killer. This implies that the odd finding of language in the evidence suggests that it was Coleman's writing. The language Coleman uses when scrolling on walls by writing text on cell phones is one and the same. The red gravity writing on the wall as well as the email message were engineered by Coleman. In addition, the allegation that Coleman killed his wife and children can also be linked to the words of the his wife through the testimony of his wife's friend, that is, if something happened to her, then Chris did it. All of those things strongly support that Coleman is the real killer. Finally, after many other findings made by other witnesses, other expert witnesses, and also the police, Coleman was found guilty and charged with the death penalty for first-degree murder, but then sentenced it to live imprisonment three times. Okay, everyone, I think that's all about forensic linguistics and how forensic linguistics can solve the Coleman case. For your attention, I say thank you.